now that I can actually see myself, it's loads better. It's like talking to a buddy. <laughs> and what better buddy than yourself, right? Oh, my ball ran away again. Hi, and welcome to my channel. Today, it's going to be a little in-between episode. I thought that before the release, which is the release day for Chloe's sweater, and I thought I'm just gonna make a separate episode for that. I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about my current projects, the finished projects, the garments currently in test knitting, and not too much in depth. Yeah, just a little bit to give you a quick update and I gotta create content, right? So, um, yeah, so where do I start with? I thought that the second time I do this, this would be easier. It is a little bit not there yet, so be patient with me. I'm sure that at one point it just feels super natural to talk to yourself in an empty room. So I am wearing my newest design. It is called the Helios sweater. Helios as the god of sun. As you can see, yes, the color is very much where I drew the inspiration. The sweater that I'm wearing. I wasn't originally planning to wear this one because I was hoping that I would have my... I just keep waving these green balls around, but... Oh my god, the most gorgeous green and this is so out of character for me that I am showing you this. All this color, I mean look at this. If you, if you <laughs> have been following my work for a while. One of my, back in the day she was a test center for me. Monica on Instagram after I posted all these colorful pictures. What's happening to you? All these colors, like, no, I don't know what's happening, but it's happening. Yeah, if you have been following me for, for a while you you, you can see the evolution and I feel like it was 2022, I think. I, I think it was 2022. My favorite color was natural dark gray and brown and everything that I knit was pretty much natural dark gray and brown. <laughs> or sometimes I would venture out uh, into, into dark mossy green or yeah, everything was really moody and really muted and that that kind of changed a little bit last year but yeah this this year I really have gone crazy I think it it happened it finally happened I've lost my mind um no I don't know what it is honestly it's just like one of those things you think you don't like something and how often in life it is like that like you think you don't like something and you swear like I will never I will never wear colors I will I would never wear a neon color. I will never wear anything but these tones or I will never eat that or I will never listen to that and there you are doing just that a couple of months a couple of years later so never say never. This is the Bayfair raglan. I know that in the last video I showed you really heavily worn sweaters with lots of pilling that I could have removed but I didn't because I kind of tried to make a point on how much I wore them. I do need to fix them because I put one of them on the dark, the natural dark gray one. I was like, I really love this sweater. It's just like, it's too much pilling. The, the arms are short, the sleeves are short. I would have to do some surgery and kind of just do them all over. Like just get rid of the ribbing, cut off the ribbing, I think. And then pick up the stitches, lengthen the arms a bit because just making the ribbing itself longer is not gonna work there. Anyways, I thought I would finish it before I'm recording this video and I did, but I didn't get to block it. I think I'm just gonna steam block it, but I haven't woven in ends and briefly today before I put on the Helios sweater, I actually did consider just trying to hide the fact that there there's yarn coming out everywhere and I would have to remove all the um, stitch markers, but no. No, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna do it properly, and I still have stitch markers here as well. None of this, like, well, there are three finished objects, but I'm not gonna wear them today. I'm gonna do that on a different occasion when I actually have the videos dedicated to them, so. But I'm gonna talk about them a little bit, of course. But anyway, so if I rug down, so this is one of my, this is my... <laughs> I guess like my first step towards actually updating all the patterns and Wayfair Raglan, the first entry in the Wayfair collection that I talked about in the previous video because it was one of the first design from designs from last year, from 2023. So it was designed for 
unspanned new T Dan yarn, which is amazing. And I knit both of my samples in unspanned new T Dan yarn, and it it works really really beautifully with unspanned yarn, whether held double or a single strand held with another lace weight yarn, like alpaca lace or silk mohair, obviously. But I also wanted to go back to my yeah go back to through some of my favorite staple older designs and gradually i guess i i am hope i get to all of them but i'm just gonna start with the the ones that i deem the most important i guess and i just feel like re-knitting again and yeah so there have been layout updates since and i also started adding schematics this is also missing that I wanted to update the grading to be truly size inclusive because Wayfair Raglan is kind of size inclusive adjacent and that's not okay. I wanted to also, like one of the things I wanted to do is if the design is in spun yarn, I want to knit it in unspun yarn if possible. I have plans to redo one of my older designs, Heritage Sweater in Nutiden yarn, which it actually is perfect for and I kind of think of it as a Nutiden design because most people who knit it also knitted in Nutiden and Unspun Yarn due to its warmth and weight ratio is actually really perfect. And I still have the colors that Caroline back then when she, um, she knit that little sample. Uh, she didn't knit the sample, she knit a kind of a swatch. And she used these beautiful colors that immediately thought like, that must be, that must become a sweater, I need that too. And they're still sitting in my shelf, so I'm gonna use them for that. But so yeah, like the idea is that if the sweater and if it is possible, and if it was knit in unspun yarn, I'm gonna make some spun yarn samples and uh, explore what kind of more accessible spun yarns I can I can list in the pattern as well and to provide you with meter ridges. So you have that option because I know that you don't always wanna, not everyone wants to knit with unspun yarn, not everyone has unspun yarn always available to them. Even I don't always wanna knit with unspun yarn and I knit with unspun yarn a lot, but there's there's some point, I, I need something else, I need variety and that is very understandable and different yarns and different yarn combinations create different effects of course as well. And there's so many reasons why, why you would wanna use one or the other and I really don't have a have a preference, honestly. It's just there's time for, for each of them. I kind of wanted to have something a bit more regular <laughs> feeling, more luxe. I, I don't even know. This is just Sunless Double Sunday in this colorway 8236. I'm not sure what it is called. But if you if you go and look at their yarns, you're gonna immediately notice this super fresh, lush green colorway. And the other one is Tin Silk Mohair, and it's also the same color, H236. I met the gauge for Wayfair Raglan spot on. It's just identical on needle size 4.5 as well. But yeah, of course, like the fabric is is very different, and I love how this is just 100% merino, and Tin Silk Mohair from Sunless it has a little bit of wool content. So it still has like a little bit of a rustic, warm woolly feeling. I love how how drapey it is. It's not even blocked yet, but it's just like so wonderfully. It's heavier because it's spun yarn and spun yarn is super lightweight. So it's not gonna ever drape like that. I'm having um, a moment with um, folded over colors. It started with Chloe sweater, but I just, can't get enough of them right now because I, I really love how polished it looks. Right now I'm just really having this, it's just one of those things, like when I like something, I, I, won't, I can't have enough of it. I'll just, if I learn a new technique, well this, not a new technique, like, but it's, it's like whenever I learn a new technique, I'm like, I'm gonna add it everywhere now. Or if I find a new yarn I like, I'm like, I'm gonna knit 10 sweaters <laughs> and I need to have all the colors. And it's just like, it's what happened with, with folded colors because I started with Chloe and I really just wanted to make this super cozy v-neck inspired by one of my favorite store-bought sweaters. It has this really cozy, cozy, color. Then I made another sample of Chloe and it also has a folded crew neck. Also super soft, squishy, nice. Then I made Caro sweater folded color because I also thought a flat color just wouldn't be substantial enough because there is a bit of, it's not much bulk with this yarn combination. It kind of needed that. It really it kind of elevates it as well I think and yeah then I made Helios sweater 
and because of the cables here in the front I wasn't satisfied with having a flat color as well I kind of wanted something more substantial to balance out the cables and now I made a fair raglan with a folded color which I'm gonna inst add instructions for in the pattern I'm gonna Everything that I do here, there are little minor changes that I've added as well for my size, but nothing too much, just like little details. So I'm just gonna add this option to the pattern as well, but it's really easy to do. You know what I noticed? Like, it's so weird because I've seen so many videos talking about the special way of doing short rows and how you should not do them in the back of the sweater. And I'm like, okay, like, like let's watch this very special technique. And oh my God, have I been doing it wrong all along or something because I love my short rows. And it turns out I've been doing the, the right kind of short rows <laughs> this entire time. No, I've never added uh, short rows only to the back of the neck. I've never done that. My short rows always extend over the shoulders a little bit to the front and they they kind of go around they I would never raise the back of the neck just like that just raising the back of the neck it's not comfortable <laughs> it's 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 quite horrible really and yeah so you could of course you know not start with the neck and then you could do you just cast on the back of the neck and each shoulder and a little bit in the front and then you could just work the short uh, they're not short rows anymore if you work back and forth but I always I, I keep always calling them short rows because for some reason for me short rows are just like anything you do back and forth to shape something is a short row for me not obviously that is inaccurate and that is wrong you would do the neck shaping just by working back and forth and creating this crescent and then you could just cast on the stitches in front and join it around and then you could just do the color later but I do like in many cases actually just doing the ribbing first so in that case you work the short rows afterwards but it's the same principle yeah so I think that I, I changed a little bit about the circumference not of the chest but of the arm and I made it slightly thinner ever so slightly only by I think two centimeters and I might be saying something wrong at this point I had my reasons for doing whatever I was doing and the fit is amazing and should I just put it on I mean I'm just gonna do that for a second. Like you sit along long enough on a on a spinning bench, your like legs go numb. Anyways, yeah, I haven't figured out the situation, but like I don't have a single chair that actually is as low as as I would want it to be. Um yeah, so this is the setup I'm working with right now. I have to figure out something else that is more comfortable, maybe. But also I'm not supposed to make 20 hour long videos, so it should work, right? But I'm already sitting here longer than I was planning to, so because I can't seem to shut up. So here it is. The sweater in all its glory, unblocked and with ends not woven in, but I absolutely love it. And it's so, so, so great for spring. I just, this color, I mean, look at it. I mean, it really is. And I can't believe that I am loving this color. This is so out of character, but I guess this is the character now. So it's within character limits again, I guess. It's just really, really gorgeous. But honestly, I love green in general. I, I don't think that I've seen many green tones that I wouldn't like to some extent, at least. I think my favorite really is um, kind of this pine like this deep pine kind of cold green and this warmer mossy mossy green like this is one there's this one plotilope color that I really really adore that I made my low-key um that I made my low-key raglan in just gonna be pictures here somewhere <laughs> there you go um yeah and so I actually have I really am scared like this is my new Tiden wall my wall of nutidum behind me and i'm kind of like i just got all of it to fit in this one cupboard it's one human size cupboard and before you judge me for my excess this is my job so don't judge me i never gravitated towards this kind of bright green but now i don't know maybe it's just like the older you get the more i don't know the gloominess of winter gets to you and where we live I love winter. I do snow and, and sunny, beautiful days where it's cold, but it's also fresh and then bright and big, heavy trees that are just heavy with the branches leaning and happy dogs, happy huskies. But most of the time that is not the reality. Yeah, most of the time the reality where I live is just very thick fog that kind of like, the kind of cold that gets through your jackets and 
layers of wool and everything and just like feels like it goes straight into your bones and you just can't seem to warm up afterwards if you've been outside. It's just like this really humid and wet cold. Fog can be beautiful, especially it's when there's still leaves and uh, have these moody days. There's still some sort of color and it can be beautiful in summer when you have this deep green trees and you know you're somewhere on top of a mountain and you see fog covering everything and it's just like it's really beautiful but trust me that I say that fog is not fun to live in it is not and I live in a region where it's kind of it's always blanketed by fog from late autumn to to spring so whenever you drive out of it somewhere else drive 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 and then suddenly it's clear and sunny it's like huh so it was actually a nice day today i didn't realize that because you never know if the sun is shining down here it gets old and maybe like lately i noticed that every every year i'm kind of gravitating towards either patterns or yarns or kind of like i don't know design ideas that that reflect something about spring and summer and last year it was imagine spring um, cowl and a soft-spoken sweater that kind of reminded me of these sprouting leaves and vines and I don't know some gentle awakening of nature of some sort I guess um, yeah but this year it's just color and um, just joyful colors and fun patterns and, and all of that and so yeah I'm really happy that this sweater worked out so perfectly I am gonna make another one in this. I am gonna make another one in Double Sunday with Tin Silk My Hair because it just works beautifully. I really love knitting with it. I hope it holds up well as well. I have no idea yet, I haven't worn it, but it's gonna be a staple this spring. And I'm gonna also knit one in this kind of color because I'm so in love with it. This is Motta from Wool Dreamers. And this is a neon orange kind of color, 463. So, yeah, uh, obsessed with it, really, really obsessed with this color. So, yeah, I'm gonna make um, another wave wear raglan like this. And then I'm gonna think about making some sort of off-white, creamy, beige, not sure yet, but something more neutral that is not so in your face and that you can wear on more occasions, but also something bright, so. Yeah, but this double color, is here to stay. I think that I'm just gonna, every sample of Wayfair Raglan I make from now on is gonna have this double color. At least in, in spun yarn. Maybe, maybe not in Nutidin. I need to make some more Nutidin samples, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get in the mood for that later this year when it's getting towards the fall and kind of missing this coziness because right now I'm in my summer mood and colorful mood and also looking forward to more light and airy knits and I am working on a t-shirt design that for some reason I didn't bring into this room, but there isn't much to see to it right now. I am all over the place, but if you have the pattern, it's a good combination to try. Am I just gonna keep wearing this sweater? Maybe. So let's talk a little bit about Helia as well. I'm wearing my unfinished, finished object. Where do I even start? I think that I have to... <laughs> ah, everything's falling around. Uh, I think I have to start from the beginning. So a long, long time ago, I made a swatch and then I made another swatch in Wool Dreamer's Motta, and which quickly turned in into one of my favorite, all-time favorite yarns. I don't even know when, when this was, but the original idea was to have these kind of cables. I really love um, how Motta works with cables. Like the stitch definition is really amazing. Yeah, so I wanted to make something um, with cables in it. And this was the original idea. And I still have the original unfinished sweater, which is gonna get frogged. I don't have the heart to do it, but I have to. But if, if you look at the picture I posted on Instagram, and it looked like, I don't know if you can see it because how it was for me. I took the picture, I posted it on Instagram and then I came back to, to the room here in, in the studio and I was just looking at that sweater still hanging on the wall. I was looking at it and I was kind of thinking that I wanted it all to be in reverse stockinette and have these braids only, but with also something in the middle because this looks so empty. There's a lot of things wrong with this. One of them is actually a super embarrassing, I don't know what happened and I don't know, I'm just brain, but I don't know if you can, you can spot 
spot the mistake. <laughs> yeah, also, why did I do that in the back? I don't know, like, for some reason, I... Sometimes I just get this idea that I should do something really special with it, so I I kind of overdo it. it. It can't just be like something simple, it just has to be special and interesting, so it's just here are cables and there are no cables and there are cables again and and the bag should just be entirely different and yeah, no, I, I don't know, I, I don't like it, I don't like it like this, I think that this is just too much random and not enough symmetry and well that can be good sometimes, I don't know, like maybe you like it but I need to like it as well. There's also one major issue. I had so much fun knitting these these cables and, and for some reason, I don't know what I was thinking, but this neck is too high. What I did was I worked the shoulder shaping from one corner to another and back and forth over the neck. And now there is this really huge raised piece of fabric at the back of the neck, which I only noticed after I actually tried it on after I had knit all of this and I had tried it on. I was like, why is the neck like that? I, it, it should have been obvious. It's like I didn't realize that I had done that, but that's what happened and it shouldn't be like that. Is this the same reason why you shouldn't raise the back of the neck in general? Just the back of the neck because it creates this, this fabric and there's, there's this little bone at the back of your neck and it kind of goes over it and creates this little pocket or hump, like it kind of looks like a hump if you wear that and it's awful. But I do love these grey cables and in, in motor yarn and everything. So I am definitely making another version but it's gonna be different. I think it's gonna be a full-on cable sweater. I may alter the stitch pattern a little bit but this is gonna be kind of like a counterpart to my fun red one. <laughs> this turned out exactly as I wanted to be. So I was, as, I, as I was looking at that picture on the wall, I saw this in a bright color. I hadn't actually seen this Wool Dreamers color, but I just looked at it in. I, I wish this was something bright, something like really bright red or, or something like that. And not my first thought, like ever, normally. <laughs> this is not what I what I think of when I think of colors, but for some reason I was just looking at pictures. Sometimes, you know, like inspiration can come from many places and sometimes it comes from the weirdest places as well. Sometimes inspiration comes from messing up and being in your headspace and doing something wrong and the, the first sample not working out the way you wanted it to and that's where inspiration can come from as well. This is exactly what I imagined it would be. The body is reverse stockinette and it has shoulder shaping, gentle shoulder shaping. It has it has the same cable pattern in front and the back, and I I like it much better like this. It it doesn't look so empty as you can see if you compare it to the. You see, this is this is just this is wrong, and this this just looks so much better. So there's a lesson somewhere in there about trying too hard, and not that I wasn't trying hard with this one, but less is more. So then we have the next one that is currently in test knitting and this was in design in collaboration with Wool Dreamers. Be pristine for my video, please. Yeah. Just threads everywhere. I have these pristine, fresh plates of manchalopes. So fun fact, I have never played yarn chicken ever in my life. That just doesn't happen to me and I don't know if that is something to celebrate and if that is a good thing or that just says that I'm a complete control freak. So when I saw these manchalope colors, I put the white, yeah, throw the white away, do that. When I saw these manchalope colors, I first tried manchalopes when they only had the natural colors, which are all gorgeous. And so I made my fisherman's raglan in it, in manchalopes on Spaniard. And I made my high peak sweater using uh, a couple of the natural colors. And at the time they only had these beautiful natural colors, but they expanded the color range. I might be wrong and I might be saying something wrong, but I think that they added the pastels first and some point later they added these colors, so these three. And I saw all of them together. I think it may have been a picture where these were stacked on top of each other. I'm not sure what the events were anymore. But yeah, so please mind that this was before I had embraced colors before this year's color craze. Yeah, so this was also very, very out of character at the time at least. I looked at all of these colors together and I thought I need them all in one design together. And I didn't have like, any kind of 
classic color work in mind, I, I wanted something whimsical and joyful and fun. And I knew that I had to use all of them together and I wanted them all together on white background. The sweater that I ended up making out of, out of them is not what I originally had in mind, but I am a firm believer in also the knits being... There has to be some sort of fun component. If there are difficult parts, they have to be balanced out by the fun parts. Because I think that knitting... Most of us do knit for, for the fun of it, for the joy of it, to relax after work. Well, unless knitting is your work, then it's not relaxing. Sometimes it is. I am kind of getting so far away from the, the original topic, it's impossible. But um, yeah, so this one evening I had finished the Chloe sweater and I felt like it was the right time before summer. I wanted to release it somewhere in the spring and these joyful colors, it was time, it was their turn basically. So I was doing some swatches and I came across this stitch pattern and I quite immediately thought that's it. I tried it and it worked out so beautifully. Like, yes, this is it. This is, this is exactly what this sweater needs and what these colors need to be. I'm gonna get that swatch. Yeah, so I grabbed some swatches. So I think... I think that there's no point in weaving it in, in, in something like this. And I did swatch flat, so... And the sweater is worked both in the round and, and back and forth as well. So this was the original swatch and I already loved the result. But so as you can see that... Wait, this is not the original swatch. That is bad swatch. This is the original swatch, sorry. I think that one was me just trying out different combinations, kind of stacking the colors. It's not different color combinations, but different arrangements, so sorry. This is the original swatch. I don't even know how to explain it. I have tried to explain it in a pattern. There are so many things you can do with it. You could obviously, obviously just use two colors and have this dotted sweater. And yeah, as you can see, um, I have played with colors, I've used uh, two strands. You know what happened? I... I'm just looking at it. This is not the original swatch either. What am I talking about? So what's happened is I have lost the original swatch. You know what? Let's take the sweater. <laughs> as you can see, there is a color it's getting darker. How long have I been doing this? I tried quite a lot of combinations, how to stack these. So the one I was showing you earlier, the wrong swatch. I just realized it's wrong because there's two lines. So, but you can do this as well. And I added a couple of charts and a couple of options, suggestions, how you could play with this. So this is just within the realm of these three colors. As you can already tell, this is a great stash poster project as well. Anyways, here you can, here you have, like this was my, my second best option. So it was when I was deciding what kind of combination is gonna be. It was between this one with having one full line and then continuing on to the next color shift and having two, lines. So this would have been a bit more blocky, I guess, but it's also really, really pretty. It's just, it was my preference at the time. If I had the time, I would, <laughs> I would make so many versions of this and test out different combinations, but I do not have that kind of luxury. Yeah, maybe at, at one point I would actually love to make this with a darker background. I not only love the playful co color combination, but I love the texture of this sweater as well. So this is a, yeah, Caro sweater. It's currently in testing. It is a classic Raglan sweater. No shaping, it's unisex sweater. It's worked from the bottom up and I thought it would be more beneficial. Let's be honest, I just wanted to get to working the body in this pattern before I had to do anything else. Uh, no, but that's not the only reason. I, I thought it would be easier for you as well. And it was easier to, for me to to make the sample and write the pattern this way as well, just working the body first. You do need some, some time to adjust your tension, to adjust to the stitch pattern. I think that if you start working the body per first, you, you have the opportunity, you, you have the time to get used to it. Because if you started the shoulder shaping first, I think it would be a lot more confusing. Yeah, and bottom up always has the benefit of having more structural integrity, being more stable. So there's that. Simple raglan line, so it's very 
unobtrusive, they don't really interfere with the pattern. And I thought like the, squish, the squishy folded color is such a nice touch and these. still have to take pictures for this one. This one is due to release beginning of April, somewhere beginning of April. It's, first, it's the first or second week of April. I'm gonna talk about it more when we get closer to the release. It's currently in testing. You know, my husband is so distracting in his call right now in the other room. I hope you can't hear that. Wait, I have to go and scream at him. 